Hi, I'm here today to give you a brief introduction into getting the most out of the laboratory scale testing of your ion exchange resin sample. You should have or should be expecting a sample of your ion exchange resin provided by your salesperson. Uh, a one liter sample is more than enough to run uh, multiple evaluations in the lab. The most common evaluation would be a single analyte removal. And I'm gonna step you through how to, how to conduct that experiment right now. First things first is the equipment you're gonna need. So an approximate one inch diameter glass column with threaded ends and, and fittings with retention screens, a support system and clamps to hold up the equipment, a method of delivery for your solution, be it as simple as an addition funnel or a basin and a pump, sample, uh, sample jars to collect your effluent samples, and then myriad of extra little things such as uh, stopcocks, tubing, etc. cetera. Uh, first thing you wanna do when you go to load your resin is close the bottom stopcock in your column, add a small amount of water. The reason we add this small amount of water is so that as you load your media, it prevents uh, any air pockets from forming as the media settles. It's always a good idea for the first thing to add to your column is a small amount of sand. The sand is inert and, and acts as an under drain so that you get the best use out of the resin you're adding to the column. On top of the sand, you can add, you start to add your small amounts of resin. Again, a good idea is to add a little bit of resin followed by a little bit of water, always making sure that the water level stays above the resin level. For most experiments on a small lab scale, you wanna target approximately 12 inches of bed depth. Twelve inches of resin allows for the solution to be treated to have a, a large enough path length of resin to remove the target analyte. Uh, commonly in ion exchange, you'll you'll hear the term bed volume, and bed volume very straightforward just means the volume of resin in your bed or column of resin. Um, so once you have your bed loaded, you'll want to set up your your delivery system again being an addition funnel or a pump and start adding solution through your resin. Um, it's important to collect discrete samples of the solution coming through your resin. And it's also very important to um, establish and monitor the flow rate of the solution. You want the flow rate to remain consistent so that the solution, the treatment of the solution remains consistent throughout your experiment. It's also important that your, your flow rate is not too fast or too slow. If your flow rate is too fast, the resin won't have an opportunity to remove the analyte. And if your flow rate is too slow, there won't be enough force of the solution flowing through your resin so that the solution does flows through the resin as opposed to flowing around the resin. It's important during your experiment to take discrete samples of the treated effluent to track both the performance of the resin and also be able to calculate the total throughput for your service cycle. For example, if you can collect 10 bed volumes worth of treated solution, you'll know that your full scale, your full scale system will produce approximately 10 bed volumes during a service cycle. One of the other really fascinating things about ion exchange resin is that most process, in most processes, the resin is completely reusable. These processes are referred to as regenerable systems. And in, the, in, in those systems, you use a chemical regeneration to remove the target analyte from the resin while simultaneously refreshing the exchange sites to their original state. For a regenerable system, your first service cycle will always be your longest service cycle because the resin is both brand new before your first cycle and 100% regenerated. It's not economical to perform a full 100% regeneration for a regenerable system. So the degree of your regeneration through your regeneration protocol will always dictate the actual service cycle of what we, what we typically refer to as your steady state operating. Um, 
during regeneration, it's always important first before you run your regeneration to prepare the bed for a quality regeneration. We do that by by applying a backwash, a backwash being flowing resin in the opposite direction of your flow or upflow, and that achieves three things. First, it loosens up bed compaction that, that was established during the service run. It removes fine particulates from the, from the bed by allowing them to exit out of the top of the, res, of, of the resin bed. And three, it reclassifies the bed, allowing the small particles to float towards the top and the larger particles to sink to the bottom. All three of these achieve the goal of setting up the resin so that it is most well prepared to be regenerated. Um, in regenerations, there are two modes. There's a co-flow regeneration where you flow your, res your, your regenerating chemical downflow or in the same direction as your service flow or counterflow regeneration. Counterflow regeneration where you're flowing your regenerant chemical upflow, same direction as your backwash or the opposite flow of your service regeneration. There's advantages and disadvantages to both of these. A co-flow regeneration is the most straightforward, it's the simplest, but it's less effective because as you could imagine, you're pushing your chemical and analyte down through the bed, more or less concentrating it towards the bottom. This, is, this establishes a low level of what we call leakage or the amount of target analyte coming out during solution. For a counterflow regeneration, you're doing the exact opposite and pushing all of, your, all of your analyte back out through the top of the resin. However, the engineering for a counterflow regeneration system for full scale is more complicated, so it's not always preferred. So those are the basic steps for running a laboratory scale evaluation of ion exchange resin. To review, you want to make sure you have the proper equipment set up, um, that when you load your, the resin in your column, you load it in a, in a manner to avoid air pockets. During your experiment, you keep a consistent flow and you monitor that flow throughout the experiment. You collect representative samples so you can track the performance of the resin. Decide on whether or not you're going to run a regenerable system. And if you are going to run a regenerable system, to be sure to perform a backwash prior to regeneration and then decide whether you're going to run a co-flow or counterflow regeneration. And when in doubt, contact your sales representative because we pride ourselves in providing technical support to all of our customers. Thank you.